I have an, an, an um, um, oh, I, I killed my boyfriend in self-defense. On October 12, 2012, Shayna Hubbers shot and killed her boyfriend, Ryan Carter, in Highland Heights, Kentucky. She immediately called 911 and told them what had happened, claiming she had killed him in self-defense. The couple had met on Facebook through mutual friends and dated on and off for about 18 months. To say Shayna was obsessed with Ryan would be an understatement. The problem was, Ryan had trouble hurting her feelings and letting her go. Ryan finally gathered enough courage to separate with Shayna. After their breakup, he had scheduled a date with Miss Ohio of 2012, Audrey Bolt. On the night of the date, Shayna knocked on Ryan's door. Her goal was to win him back, and when that didn't work, she shot and killed him. Where are you? I'm standing about 10 feet from his dead body. <laughs> okay, are you sure that he is dead? Ryan had been shot six times, including in his face. When asked why she shot him so many times, Shayna said because he was twitching and I knew he was going to die anyways. He was making funny noises, so I shot him a couple more times. He was twitching so bad and I didn't want to watch him lay there and twitch. Prosecutors say Shayna killed Ryan because he was leaving her. Shayna claims Ryan pressured her to perform sex acts and was abusive. She said her inability to orgasm with Ryan was a sticking point in the relationship. He, he slammed you into the couch, but you don't have any injuries? I don't have any injuries. I was just very frightened. He's, he picked, he's a lot bigger than me. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. I'm 5'8", 120. And he, and he picked me up. Prosecutors went through text messages from Shayna and Ryan and their friends to show that he was not abusive. Also, the crime scene showed no signs of domestic violence. This is the interrogation of Shayna, where she acts very strange while talking with the detective. And in the middle of him doing something with his arm or saying something crazy, he shot him. And... Oh my God, what have I done? You know? And... She is about to explain why she killed Ryan after he was wounded. She acts as if she is the hero because Ryan was on the ground twitching and in obvious pain. And by killing him to put him out of his misery, it is somehow justified. He was laying with his face on the table, like twitching. And so... I knew he was going to die a very slow and painful death. I knew he was already dead, you know, I, within the next 20 seconds. Within the next two minutes, I knew he was going to be dead. And he was in a lot of 
pain. He was twitching. He was moaning. But he was ultimately dead. And so I shot him enough times to kill him so that he wouldn't suffer at that point, which was a few more times. And I shot him, I think I shot him twice, thought he was completely dead and he was laying there still twitching and making noises. And I shot him in the head. She now begins to walk around the room, continuing to explain with hand gestures that Ryan was going to die anyways, so she did the right thing. I probably should have left it there, but I knew he was going to die. Mm -hmm. Or have a very deformed face. And you were concerned. And I knew... Oh, no, he would have died. He was already dying. He was already... He was dying. But I just walked around the table and shot him where I knew he would die immediately. After blaming Ryan's obsession with guns as the reason for his death, she begins to walk around the room singing. In fact, his obsession with guns killed him. You know, I would have never, I'm so Democrat, I would have never touched a gun in my life until I dated him. <laughs> She begins to talk about the events that happened that night, as if she was talking to a girlfriend about her day at work. He had put his arm across the table, and there's a lamp. And he had put his arm across the table and had it in my face and was screaming at me at the top of his lungs after he had thrown me around the room. And was saying emotionally to me, I hate you. I hate everything about you for what's wrong in my family. And he was screaming it and he was he had his hand on the table and he wasn't completely standing up. He was like this. He was sitting he was announced it when I shot him. He was went like this. Literally. That's when I knew he was dead. Or close to it mm -hmm. and twitching. And that's and I couldn't I let him, I still, even though the hurt, I still, and that's on me, loved him. She will begin to laugh after explaining that Ryan was vain and wanted a nose job, so by shooting him in the face, she gave him what he wanted. That I couldn't stand to watch him twitch, I knew he was going to die, or have a completely deformed face. He's very vain. One of our last conversations we had that was good was that he wants my best friend who's a dentist to do with veneers, and wants to get a nose job, just that kind of person. And I shot him right here. I gave him his nose job. He wanted a broke it. I'm not your typical murderer, no, not the least. She laughs when talking about Ryan and shows no empathy towards his death. Lack of empathy is one of many signs of narcissism. This means that the narcissist is unwilling or unable to empathize with needs, wants, or feelings of other people. This also makes it difficult for them to take responsibility for their own behavior. And you know, I wasn't doing anything that was mean. I was like begging him to, to stay in the relationship and be with me because I knew that we weren't really loving each other. You know, Ryan had told me that he loved me and wanted to be with me. And I guess somewhere along the way, that grew to hate. He was screaming how much he hated me. I don't know if anyone will ever 
want to marry me if they know that I killed a boyfriend and helped. <laughs> Not funny, but the stuff he was saying to me was so abusive while he was throwing me around the room. Again, she laughs as she only thinks about herself, saying that nobody will ever want to marry her because she killed her boyfriend. Anyone will ever want to marry me if they know that I killed a boyfriend and helped. <laughs> Not funny, but the stuff he was saying to me was so abusive while he was throwing me around. The I think in the midst of that, my love turned to hate. I remember screaming, F reaching up to grab the shirt. F you out there, you mock my family out there. Talk about it. Please stick really my mother and my family. If I don't get any serious consequences, then I could really be happy just having a career and maybe not even ever getting married. And this is very traumatic, you know. Very traumatic for me to mm -hmm. live with it. I have to know that I did that to someone that I told every day I love you. She continues to focus on herself, saying words like me and I. She talks about how she will never have a career or a life. She says that it is a very traumatic situation for her to have to live with it. One major indicator of narcissism is someone acting self-centered. People who were put on a pedestal as a child and were their parents' whole world or didn't receive enough discipline can easily become narcissistic. I think in the midst of that, my love turned to hate. I remember screaming, F reaching up to grab the shirt. F you out there, you mock my family out there. I didn't do anything that was mean. I was like begging him to, to stay in the relationship and be with me because I knew that we weren't really loving each other. You know, right? It told me that he loved me and wanted to be with me. And I guess somewhere along the way, that grew to hate. He was screaming how much he hated me. Shayna received life in prison for her murder. While imposing the sentence, the judge said, your actions that evening were grossly violent and intentionally calculated to cause his death. Shayna showed no visible emotion during sentencing or when bailiffs escorted her away. It appears that you've fallen in love. Yes. How did that happen? Um, I can only describe it as um, like a spiritual encounter that I had with another person that I met here a couple years ago that I grew to know over the years. Years after her initial arrest, Shayna requested to be interviewed in prison. Her main goal was to talk about how she was in love with someone new and how the prison was not allowing them to get married. I, I feel as if I've been retaliated against at the actual institution, at the, at the jail, because the jailer was contacted by Richard McBee, mm -hmm. Unique Taylor, and that he didn't want any type of retaliation. Um, I, I was moved to a different cell. Mm -hmm. All of my legal documents for my court case were taken from me. This interview gave Shana a chance to show sympathy and remorse to the world, but instead, she chose to talk about how having the trial take place in the same town as the murder was just not fair to her. When you were with Ryan, though, did you identify as, as bisexual, as lesbian? I guess, I guess I'm trying to figure out how you know, you've fallen in love with, with I don't Unique believe now. that I would label myself as straight, bisexual, lesbian. Mm -hmm. I am someone who has fallen in love with certain people. Near the end of this interview, she was asked if she had any remorse towards Ryan's family. She immediately made it clear she was not here to talk about that. Um, have you ever had any moments of uh, remorse or the sense of apology just to Ryan Poston's family? Not I'm going not into here, specifics I'm not about... here to talk about any of that. I'm here to talk about another issue at hand. 